Hello and welcome to the 22nd video in this series of videos on programming a chess engine in C. So in this video we're going to start implementing the isSquareAttacked function. So this is basically asking if I bring up a chess position here, I might ask is the square, oops that actually made a move, stop please, is the square g3, this one here, attacked by say black? And the answer would be yes because the black queen is attacking g3. So we're going to be implementing that function in this video and also a following video because it will take too long just to do in one. So first of all how do we go about implementing this is square attacked function? Well it's actually quite easy if I go back to the board here I simply say so let's say I'm on I want to know if square e4 which is index 55 is attacked by black. Well the first thing I'll do is look at square 64 which is plus 9 and square 66 which is plus 11 and see if they have a black pawn on them. If they do I know this square is attacked. And then if I just highlight these squares here, I hope you can see the highlight on the video, these eight squares are all the squares from which a knight could reach e4. So I would then iterate around all these eight squares and say is a black knight on these squares? If so then this square here 55 is attacked by black. Then what I'll do is simply iterate in the upward direction and the downward direction, so plus and minus 10 from our square, looping, until I hit a piece or go off board. And if I hit a piece, then I'll ask, is it a black rook or queen? If it is, then I'm attacked by black. And the same in the horizontal direction, with the plus or minus 1 direction, keep going till I hit a piece from off board and if I hit a piece I say is it a black rook or a black queen and exactly the same applies then in the plus minus 9 and 11 directions sorry in the diagonals here for bishops and queens so it's actually very simple and unfortunately it's a little bit of code and preparation so I'll probably be splitting it into a couple of videos seeing as we've been rambling on for a couple of minutes so let's get started First of all I've added attack.c and included defs.h and I've put attack.c also into the make file here. And now we're going to need some definitions. And the first thing we're going to need is at the top of attack.c is some arrays, which I've already prepared. In fact all of this video, as in the last few to be honest, is all pre-prepared code because there's really no point in watching me type this code out because it's quite a bit. It's better either to type it out yourself or download it and paste it in. The main thing is you understand what the code is actually doing. So here we've got knight direction, rook direction, bishop direction and king direction. And these arrays represent exactly what I've just told you. The rooks move in a minus 1, a plus 1, a minus 10 and a plus 10. So uh, directions horizontal and vertically. The bishop, this is the minus 9, minus 11, 11 and 9 directions which are the diagonal. The king direction, because it can move one square in any direction, our combination of those two. And the knight is the funny two squares forward, one to the side, or one forward, two to the side in each direction, and has therefore eight directional possibilities. So that's the first thing we need. The next thing we need is we need to add some definitions into our data file again. First into defs.h, we're going to add in some arrays. And these arrays are simply to return to say, is a piece a knight? Is it a king? Is it a rook or a queen? Or is it a bishop or a queen? And that relates to when we're doing our iterating out along the board in a direction when we want to say, is the piece we've just hit a bishop or queen? We can already ask what colour it is from our piece call array. And I've already prepared the, in the code file here, I've already prepared those arrays filled out and I'm going to drop those now into data.c here and save everything. Like I said, I would recommend maybe you just copy and paste this in yourself. The main thing is the understanding. Okay, the next thing we need is we need to put some definitions, some macros in, into defs.h, the bottom of the macros section. And these are simply to shorten asking the question, is it a bishop, queen, rook, or queen, or whatever, without having to type these arrays out every time because it makes the old fingers sore. And do we have anything else definition wise that we need to add in? No we don't. Good. 
So now we need to do is build up what you can see here in the pre-prepared code, the is square attacked function. I'm just checking how long we've been going because I don't want this video to be too long. Good, we'll make a start. The first thing to do is the definition of the square attacked function. And this definition takes as arguments the square that we're interested in. So say we're asking is e4 attacked? What side is doing the attacking? It's important to remember that in this because it can get confusing when you're looking through the function. So this is the attacking side and obviously the current position we have on the board as well. So next up, let's have a look at variable definitions and the pawns. So we define a variable to hold a piece, our indexing for loops, a temporary square and a direction variable which will become clear later where that will be used. And let's start with the pawns. I've already explained how the pawns work on the spreadsheet here so it should be fairly self-explanatory. I'm going to say if the attacking side is white and if on our position at our square we're interested in minus 11 or minus 9 there's a white pawn. So say we're interested in square e4 square 55 so if I do minus 11 to 44 or minus 9 to 46 and there's a white pawn on, even the, on either of those then obviously this square is attacked by white because pawns attack one square diagonally. So we return true. Else the attacking side is black and we go in the other direction with plus 11 and plus 9. And this remember is also where our border squares come in handy here because in the plus 11 or sorry in the minus 9 or plus 11 directions here and here we just go onto our grey squares so we don't need to do any clever tricks we haven't wrapped around the board and gone come, come on the other side like we would do if we didn't have any of these border squares here so this is already where this setup here comes in quite handy and makes things relatively easy so this is how we detect the attacks from the pawns now the next step is to look at the attacks from the knights and then the sliding pieces but I'm going to stop this video here and I'm going to start doing that in the next video so that I can split things up a little easier because I don't think 20 minute videos help anybody. So in the next video we'll finish off this square attack function and then we'll do a tiny little debugging with it in the main function just to see if it actually works correctly or not. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.